In today's video, I discuss the seven things that nobody tells you before you go vegan. Roll the titles. For the record, I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable. For the record, you ain't trying to grow them stuff. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Before I jump into the video, just a quick reminder that I'm now offering the SIBO organic acids stool tests and consult via my website. So if you have any health or digestive problems, then consider taking these tests as they will provide a lot of very detailed information upon which you can start making informed decisions and then start getting your health back on track. And on that bombshell, to the video. So number one, transitioning to a plant-based diet. So if you have a background of antibiotic use, poor diets, other medications, high levels of alcohol consumption, water fasting, colonics, or anything else that has had a significant impact on the diversity of your microbiome, then you need to transition into a plant-based diet very carefully. To break down food in a normal fashion, the digestive tract relies on stomach acid, digestive enzymes, bile, CCK, secretin, and hormones. But just as important, you also need a diverse range of bacteria in the gut to help ferment and break down fiber and compounds in foods such as oxalates, histamines, sulfur, and also salicylates. If you don't have a diverse range of bacteria or you have the wrong type of bacteria in the gut, then the foods won't be broken down correctly and you will experience digestive issues such as gas, bloating, cramping, and abdominal pain. So if you are transitioning to a plant-based diet or you are considering transitioning, then my first piece of advice is to do a DNA sequence of your microbiome. This is essentially a stool test that analyzes the DNA signatures of the bacteria from your gut, and it will tell you exactly how many bacteria you have in the gut, what type of bacteria you have, and what impact this ecosystem is having on your overall digestion. If we look at a normal healthy microbiome, if there is such a thing, then it will contain 600 to 1,000 species of gut bacteria. If you do this test and you have low levels of bacteria in your gut, then you will need to address this as you transition to a plant-based diet. Otherwise, as I said before, you are likely going to run into significant digestive issues such as gas and bloating. In the description below, I have listed two companies that offer DNA sequences of your microbiome. I am not affiliated to these, I do not make money from these, and the links that I have provided, I make no commission from. These tests are usually priced between 100 and 150 pound, but they give you a lot of information on the state of your microbiome. So whether you are transitioning to a plant-based diet or you have been plant-based for a period of time, then these type of tests are super useful to see what your microbiome and gut health is looking like. Now, if you have low levels of bacteria, then I would suggest that you take 1,000 milligrams of Saccharomyces boulardii per day and also fermented foods also on a daily basis. So in your gut, you have what's called your glycocalyx, and this is a carbohydrate mesh that sits between your gut bacteria and also your gut lining. Your beneficial bacteria use the glycocalyx as an anchor point, so without this, then no amount of probiotics or fermented foods will colonize your gut. Therefore, the 1000 milligram of Saccharomyces boulardii will help rebuild the glycocalyx so the bacteria can start increasing in numbers. And the beneficial bacteria will obviously come from the fermented foods that you are consuming, as well as the probiotic and prebiotic rich foods in your diet. A high proportion of those that follow this advice will transition perfectly fine into a plant-based diet without too much of an issue. But if you take Saccharomyces boulardii and fermented foods for six to eight weeks, and you are still having digestive issues after this period of time, then reach out to a specialist in gut health. There are a number of gut infections, malabsorption issues, and other problems that can cause gut issues, and these may be present before you transition into a plant-based diet. Therefore, these will need to be addressed to ensure that your gut health is in top shape. And this leads me nicely onto number two, which is underlying conditions. Now, what I mean by this is that there are many problems in the gut that can make it difficult to break down fruits and vegetables effectively. Diversity in the gut is one that I have just identified, but there are many others such as stomach acidity issues, pancreatic enzyme insufficiency, bile issues, pre-existing gut diseases such as IBS, Crohn's, SIBO, and also colitis. So if you transition to a plant-based diet without dealing with these, and then you load up with fiber, often the outcome will not be particularly great. The ex-vegan stupidity you are seeing online is often driven by issues in the gut that have not been identified, 
the person will feel bad eating fruits and vegetables, and then without a brain cell in their head, they will often start bashing plant-based and vegan diets. If you know that you have pre-existing issues, then make sure you work with somebody to help you address these, otherwise the plant-based diet will shine a light on these problems, and you will find it incredibly difficult to maintain a well-balanced diet that will supply you with both nutrition and calories. So number three is digestive support. So if you have digestive issues or are transitioning to a plant-based diet with low diversity in your gut flora, then support your digestion during this period. So you can take hydrochloric acid and also digestive enzymes. So hydrochloric acid or HCL is what you have in your stomach, so stomach acid. So when you supplement with HCL, it will reduce the pH of your stomach and help you liquefy the food more effectively in the stomach before it's released to the small intestines and beyond. The digestive enzymes will then pull apart the proteins, fats and carbohydrates more efficiently in the gut. So by taking HCL and digestive enzymes in the first six weeks, it will help drive down gas and bloating and other digestive issues so that you can really enjoy all of those tasty foods without too much of an issue. Number four is SIBO and IBS. So SIBO stands for small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So essentially you're not supposed to have too much bacteria in the small intestines as this is where you absorb your nutrients. So when you develop a SIBO infection, you essentially have an abnormal amount of bacteria in the small intestines. So when you put fiber and carbohydrates into the gut, these get heavily fermented and this produces a lot of hydrogen and methane gas. And this causes gas bloating, pain, cramping, and many other digestive issues. Depending on the studies that you look at, anywhere from 60 to 84% of people with IBS have SIBO as a driving factor. This means that if your IBS is driven by a SIBO infection and you get rid of that bacteria, then often those unwanted IBS symptoms can significantly be improved or removed altogether. Therefore, if you have IBS, significant gas and bloating, if you look pregnant after eating, or constipation or constant loose stools, then get tested for SIBO. I have many videos on this topic, so watch these for additional information. So number five is food anxiety. So many people transition into vegan and plant-based diets because of underlying health issues or after watching documentaries such as Four Over Knives. I can't tell you how many people I speak to on a weekly basis who are so anxious about their food and everything in their diet has to be perfect and super clean. And social media amplifies these problems. If you want to eat clean because you enjoy eating this way, then that's absolutely fine. But don't be governed by anxiety or fear. We are all human and we all enjoy those treats and snacks on occasions. And me personally, I try and work towards a 90-10 rule. So 90% of the time I will eat healthy and do all of the right things, including lots of fruits and vegetables. And then 10% if I want to have a pizza, then I will have one and I don't overly stress about it. If you have good gut health and a robust digestive system, then this will never be a problem. Obviously, if you have gut issues or digestive problems, then you probably won't be able to eat this way until you have resolved your gut issues. But when you have, enjoy all types of foods and don't become a victim of food anxiety or fear and believe that you have to be 100% perfect 100% of the time. So number six is extremes and please do not get caught up in these. So if you have gut issues or even if you don't, then avoid getting caught up in extremes. Water fasting, piss drinking, raw diets and everything in between will usually make your gut issues significantly worse. Simple question, how many ex-vegans are ex-vegans because they went to extremes? List as many as you can think of in the comments below. And finally, number seven, there is no such thing as a perfect diet. Diet is just one important piece of the overall jigsaw puzzle. So move more, stress less, build connections with people, be kind, sleep well, exercise and enjoy life. So that's the end of today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. And as always, remember to look after your body because it's the only place you have to live. And I'll see you next time.